So in creating explosion elements, it's critical to examine existing explosions and take them apart visually. I spent a lot of time looking at stock films of explosions before I even tried to start constructing one in particular. Now when I did that, I kind of boiled it down to a few different elements for a very simple explosion. And we'll be constructing this explosion using five different layers. First we have just a general debris layer where I have a small amount of particulate matter just sort of shooting outward. I have a generic flare just to add some uh, light to the scene. We have a what I call the cloud puff which is a cloud that kind of rises upward and fades away. On top of that we have the sparks just kind of shoot outward and get pulled down by gravity. And then on top of everything, what I call a combustion layer, which is just some smoke and debris that kind of expand outward, more or less like an expanding gas cloud. So when we mix all of these together, this will make a fairly simple but convincing looking explosion. The first element that we're going to construct is the rising cloud. This one right here, this cloud puff. So let's create a new composition for this explosion. And create a solid for this cloud. Apply trap code particular. So first thing I'm going to do is set the particle type to a smokelet. Because we are making sort of a smoky kind of look. I'll set the size to about 21 or so just to get the size of the particle up a little bit and we'll add some randomness to the size of the particles as well to make it feel a little bit more organic. And we'll do the same for the opacity. We want some random opacity in here and I'm going to turn the opacity itself way, way, way down. This is usually very low. This is what starts getting us the sort of smoky kind of texture here having a very low opacity and a high amount of random opacity. Now, as we set this to be lower and lower, we're going to see some fundamental limitations of the color depth that we're working within. If I pull up my composition settings, we can see that our color settings are set to 8 bits per channel. If I bump this up to 16 bits per channel, we're going to see this particle setting smooth out. What's going on is that we have such a low opacity that we're starting to get some banding in that 8 bit per channel color depth. The downside is that this is going to render a lot slower. But in the final render, you might want to bump your renders back up to at least 16 bits per channel to smooth out the look of these cloud settings. I'm going to set this back to 8 bits per channel to keep things moving along a little quicker than they would in 16 bits per channel. So it'll render a lot quicker, but we will see the limitations of 8 bit per channel color space. So to make this cloud, I'm going to go back to the beginning and keyframe my particles per second from a very high value to a very low value of 0 over the course of one frame. So right now I'm at 0. I have a very high particle count here. I'll move forward one frame just by tapping page down and then set this to zero. We want a very high particle count here at the beginning because this is particles per second. If we're not even going to go one full second, we can set this to a very high value and never come close to this particle count because we're never going to hit one full second. We're only going one frame. We're only emitting particles for one frame. So sometimes this can end up as high as 3,000 just to get a simple explosion setting. Just like that. Right now it's emitting in a uniform manner, which looks pretty good. What we need to happen is for this thing to rise upward. If this were an explosion, there would be a little bit of heat in here, and some of this air would actually rise upward. So the way we're going to do this is by jumping into a new section, all the way down here in the physics section. 
one of the controls we have is gravity. Now this is pretty straightforward. If I turn the gravity up to 100, this is a normal gravity that would pull things downward. And 100 is sort of a default setting of normal real world gravity. However, if I set this to a negative value, it will rise upward. Now in the emitter section here, I'll set the velocity to be pretty low. Right now it's at a 100, and as this rises upward, these do start to disperse because the particles have some velocity that are making them move in uniform directions. I'm going to turn this down so that we don't have these shooting in all different directions. It's just going to rise as a uniform little cloud. Maybe I'll turn this up just a little bit more, like 40. So we have the cloud puff sort of dissipating as it, as it rises upward. If we'd like these to fade out over time as it gets toward the top here at about one and a half seconds, what I can do is go into the particle section under the opacity over life. I'll tap the tilde key so I can see this. And we'll uh, use this one right here so it kind of fades out over time. I'm going to drag this just a little bit more so it's a little bit more gradual. and smooth this out just a little bit. So they'll start at 100% opacity and then over time they'll gradually fade out. So as they hit the top up here, they'll start to be fading out just a little bit. So next let's add the sparks that shoot from the center and then fall downward. So I'll create a new solid will be the sparks, and let's apply particular. So we had gravity set to a negative value to make this cloud rise upward. Obviously with the sparks they need to fall downward, so we're going to have a regular positive gravity. So I'll go into the physics section here, and we'll turn this up to 100. And we need that explosion setting like we did before in the emitter section. So we'll go to the particles per second, rewind to the beginning. We'll set this to 1000 and set a keyframe right at the beginning. I'll hit U, show my keyframes and jump ahead one frame and we'll set this to zero. I'm going to turn off the cloud layer for now so this renders a little faster. So we see the gravity pulling them down and we have this kind of explosion setting because we keyframe the emitter from 1,000 particles down to zero very quickly. But they need to be moving a little bit faster outwards. So I'm going to turn the velocity up so they have a little more speed right when they come out of the emitter. Now I'm going to set mine very high. These should be moving very quickly. And what we'll do to make this look a little more realistic is adjust the size and color of the particles. We'll turn the size down. We'll add a bit of randomness to the size. And we'll adjust the color over life. The sparks would sort of start out white hot when they're compacted together. And then over time, they'd sort of cool off to kind of a red. So let's go into the color over life and tap the tilde key. I'm going to click on this preset right here. Now the reason is this has three color points on here and I'm just going to modify these so that we've got red towards the death. We'll have a yellow here and we'll have something pretty close to white. Just off white towards yellow. Now let's turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer. Now to adjust this just a little bit, if you're not happy with this, this is looking pretty good, but what we can do is go into the air section here 
and add some air resistance. We've got gravity pulling them down and the velocity making them shoot outward. But if they're going a little too far, notice how they go all the way out to the edge of the screen before they start falling, we can add some resistance to their motion, which is going to make them slow down as they emit from the center. Now that's a little bit high. Let's set this to about 0.5. Oops. Set this to 1. So they gradually slow down. And I'll turn the gravity up just a little bit to add a little more pull downward. If we turn both of these on. Now we just need to add a few more things in here like the debris and the flare. So let's add the debris. Make a new solid. This will be the debris layer. What we need is just some random shapes that will emit from the center. In my original here, I have a particle called a debris particle. And all this is is some random shapes I drew using After Effects shapes and just added a little bit of fractal noise to them just to have some random shapes that I can use as particles. Notice I have a comp that is five frames in length and each of the shapes is trimmed to one frame in length. I also put a, a light in here to add just a little bit of light variation to them. And they all have fractal noise applied to them using an adjustment layer. So just some random sort of noisy debris kind of layers that I'm going to use as a particle. So notice I've got five different particle shapes in here. So back into my composition here. Let's reveal this one. I'm going to drop this debris particle into my composition and turn it off. I don't need it on. And let's apply particular to this debris layer. Now, in the particle section here, I'm going to select the particle type to be custom fill. Let's solo this. What I can do is define a layer to be used as a particle but then that particle can be filled with a different color. Notice that these are all relatively dark and I've got a black background so I'd like to fill this with a different color. So if I say custom fill and then in my custom section I'll select debris particles and in the time sampling here what I'm going to do is select split clip stretch. This is a very cool feature in trap code particular. What this allows me to do is split this custom particle up. Again, I've got five different frames in here and it's five frames in length. So I have five different particles that I would like to be using. So in here I can say split this clip five times. So it'll take a look at this composition and split it up equally five times. It'll use each of those five frames as a particle randomly. So each particle that's born is going to be one of five particles, which is pretty cool. This saves a lot of time so I don't have to set up five different compositions and five different uses of particular. I can just split a clip up five different ways and use that as five different particles. So if I go into my size here and turn up the size random. Now again we're filling this with a color. We're using white right now. I'm going to use a kind of a gray and we'll add quite a bit of rotation speed on this. Even two is pretty high. So now we have all this debris sort of shooting outward and rotating. Again we need our explosion setting on the particles per second so set this from 2000, set a keyframe, jump forward one frame and set this to zero. Now, this needs to move a lot faster, so let's turn this velocity way up and turn on motion blur for that layer. So now we just have some random debris that we can add to this explosion here. Now, again, I used a custom 
fill. I could also use custom colorize. And I had a little bit of texture in that original. So if I select custom colorize and go into my color settings here, we can see a little bit of the original color coming through. Again, right? I just had a little bit of fractal noise on there. And that might help just a touch in adding to the realism of this being some sort of garbage debris. So I'm going to put this debris layer below the cloud, and we'll add one more here, which is the expanding gas cloud. It's pretty similar to the sparks that we've used. In fact, I'm just going to duplicate this sparks layer to control D and rename this combustion. And I'll solo this layer. So I'm just going to make a sort of gas cloud sharing these same settings. I'm going to change the particle type to a smokelet and turn the size way up, the size random up, and the opacity is going to come way down. Leave it at about two. Now I'm just going to set this to a white cloud so that the color will be one constant color through the particle life. So we have this expanding gas cloud. Now, notice what's happening here. As random as these sparks and this cloud seem, remember what I said earlier about randomness in our motion. These sparks and the cloud particles are sharing the exact same position. I duplicated them, and even though I've changed a few settings, because I have the same number of particles and the same velocity, they're actually in the exact same spot. Now, as we learned, we can easily change this just by telling it to use a different random value. So I'm going to set the random seed of the combustion layer to use a different random seed. And now these will take on a completely different set of random values. Now just to tie it all together, a little bit of a flare in the center. generate lens flare, put this in the back. So with this flare here, I'm going to add on top of this CC radial blur, and this will make this look a little less like your standard After Effects lens blur. So let's do straight zoom and turn up this blur amount. Now I'll go into my flare brightness and animate this over time. So this will start at zero, go forward one frame, and turn this up to about 150 or so, and then back down to zero. Now the debris is on top of the flare, so I'm going to drag this down below because it looks a little obnoxious right now and let's tweak this flare just a little bit. 100 might be a little better of a setting there. So let's do a quick preview on this. So I'm just gonna do a few tweaks to this. I'm gonna go into the sparks here and I'll change this to a glow sphere to add just a little bit more of a glowy kind of feel to this. And on top of this, I'm going to add a standard After Effects glow. Turn up the intensity and the radius on this. I'd also like to turn up the particle count at the beginning to add a few more sparks to this. I'll turn that way up. And I'd like to have them a little more red at this point, because I think it takes a little too long for them to get through their cycle of colors. So I'm going to bring this color back so it cycles through these colors a lot quicker. And I'll add a little bit of color random to this. Not a whole lot, just around 10%. And in this cloud here, 
I'm going to turn the opacity down even more so that it's at 1% and it's feeling very cloudy, a little almost like dust. Now we'll notice right at 3 seconds all of my sparks disappear and we know exactly why that's happening. Our particle life is set to 3 seconds. So I'll set this to 5 so that they don't suddenly disappear and they drift all the way down to the end of the screen.